So at New South Wales Racing Animals, Mark Roden, how you going, Mark? Very well, thank you, Mark. How are you? Yes, very well. Um, how are things going? You've, uh, you've had a pretty good run, a few winning days. Yeah, right? the last week, 10 days have been good. I've uh, strung a few winning days together, which was needed, but it is very good to turn it around that way, and it's always good to put uh, profitable days uh, back to back. It really does mm-hmm. help the confidence and help the, uh, the bank as well. Yeah, good winner in the last, just the day of Wolfsburg. Yeah, that's right. Um, Super Long Lee, first up for Mark Newnham. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, you know, sending the um, selections out of nine, it was into mm. 340 by then, it started 250, but um, I certainly missed it. But one agency put up 850 uh, on Tuesday when, oh. Wednesday when they put up their first prices. So uh, might have to give you a bit of uh, reviewing of their processes in that particular uh, joint. But <laughs> be a nice guy to get in that early. Yeah, yeah, that didn't last time, I don't think. So I think we've kind of got the nominal last day of the carnival tomorrow mm-hmm. at Rose Hill. Headline acts a one million dollar two year old race, the eleven hundred metre golden gift. Yeah. Not generally your area of interest, but no, it's not. I've, I've said before in other podcasts and interviews and things like this that um, I I prefer to concentrate on uh, races where I've got a fuller ratings profile and yep. full of form history for the. Uh, the runners, um, there are lots of people who are expert and more expert than me at, at trial watching and assessing the, um, the talent and the upside of these young horses. Um, mm. I certainly rate them all and I do watch all the trials to try and get a handle on them, but until they've run and built up a bit more of a profile, I don't have the confidence to take on those uh, those other experts who are, who are better at it than I am. So it's, a, you know, it's an interesting race. I mean, a million dollars is for a race in early November for two-year-olds is ludicrous, really. Um, the only thing I can say in defence that it's not sales restricted. <laughs> yeah. At least it's open to all comers. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's three of the first five in the betting, I think, are um, first starters. And the favourite is actually the Kieran Mark horse up from Melbourne, who does look very hard to beat on what we've seen so far. Mm. But, yeah, not really my uh, not really my go. Just trying to get most of them to uh, run in a straight line, perhaps, at <laughs> yeah. early November. Yeah. And there was one actually in Dawes who's about $26. Yeah. Just caught my eye, having a quick look... Um, Last night, he very nice type of horse. Uh, apparently, paraded very well and um, was expected to go well and debut. It was it was just okay as a performance, but there there might be something there. Yeah. Um, perhaps the most interesting race we're saying is the uh, over fourteen hundred metres for the mares, the hot Danish, um, worth five to bring to me, actually. Yeah. And it's a prize money's not slow. <laughs> no, no. Um, it looks looks like some. Decent prices, perhaps. There's no yep. no uh, $2 yep. favourites, which is getting rarer and rarer these days. No, it's it's a reason four fifty odd the field, uh, yep. so reasonably wide open betting. Um, the interesting thing about the race for me is that it's flat set weights. It's not set weights and penalties like so many of these fillies and mares races are. So the, the main lead up was the Nibison two weeks ago at Randwick, which was set weights and penalties, and the, the first two across the line there were uh, Madame Rouge and Realim and Ruby, who. Uh, me and my followers are on, got beaten in another mm. close one. Um, they, they both carrying 54, they had no penalty, and now they're going up to the flat set weights 57, which yeah. is just a little, you know, it, it, not on its own enough to stop Real Men Ruby, I don't think, who is really looking for 1400 now. Um, and I think that's why she's favourite. Um, but against that, with the three kilo weight rise, that makes it hard for me at first, at, at the first cut of my prices to get it as short as the market. Um, yeah. I do have her on top, but just not as short as that. A few interesting runners. Madame Rouge maps well again, and she's actually uh, around seven dollars. Uh, that's that kind of um, price at the moment, which yeah. seems a, a pretty big differential for a horse that um, beat uh, Realm and Ruby. You know, uh, the best you can say is there's nothing between them on that, and you know they meet on the same weight terms, and mm. one's four fifty and one's seven dollars. So if you if you like Madame Rouge, I wouldn't talk you out of it. I do think Realm and Ruby will go better at fourteen hundred. Um, Binna Kunker, the three-year-old of Gabe Waterhouse. Very interesting runner. Um, do you want to get a perfect run here? Sort of got a bit out of her ground over 1,100 at Caulfield first up in a pretty good race behind um, Hummer Hummer. Yep. Um, up to 1,400, which is a bit of a question mark, but she'll, out of barrier uh, two, I think it is. Or, yeah, barrier two, she'll be riding up in the box seat, I think. And as a three-year-old, she's getting four kilos off all, all the mares in the race. So. She's an interesting runner and around nine dollars, eight fifty nine, she's backable. Mm. Um, I was really taken with Lover Lover's first up run behind Grey Worm. Yep. Um, she's got a she will get back, you know, awful 
heartbreaking racing pattern. She's drawn 11, J Ford. I mean, it all looks bad, but she's around 14 bucks, and I think she's just on ability. She's just about the best horse in the race. There's all those negatives. The map, jockey change, not great. Racing style, and she's second up, staying at 1400. She, she will be looking for, to get further later in the prep, but might be worth a spec at double figures, you know, but with all those negatives, it's hard to be declaring her. Yeah, sure. Just pull the other one in the markets. Um, yeah, just the other Waterhouse runner, ready to pop it. Yep. Um, she finished half length behind um, Madame Rouge and mm. Real Men Ruby in that medicine. Um, she makes them, I think it's two kilos better off. Yep. One and a half, two kilos better off. Uh, she'll lead. She's won at 1350, 1400. Might just see her. I mean, I guess the, the weight pull is sort of drag that prices a bit closer together than what they otherwise would be um, gives her a chance I mean and she's a, she'll be she'll be right now she'll be a lead or outside lead um, so she'll, she'll get every chance wouldn't be at all surprised if something ran past her but she'll certainly get every chance uh, worth noting pretty in pink ran in that race it won't be in your form globe though she um, was declared a non-runner yep that day got hit by the um, gate on the way out I think right. not sure how much impact it had uh, but she was she carried 57 in that race, uh, was beaten about two lengths by um, Madame Rouge, so if you're, if you're looking to get a line on, um, she's three guys better off and was beaten about two lengths. She's also in the book as Blinkers first time, which isn't true, she raced in Blinkers um, in that race, which is not a form book. Right. So if you're doing the form, just um, keep that in mind. Yeah, actually it doesn't seem to be a, a whole lot of movement in prices. No. Since they went up at Wednesday, which is good. Yeah, you it's... don't like to see too much pre, pre-race pre No. Snaffling the value? Well, I think, I think in a case like this, um, the form's pretty well exposed. And yeah. The, you know, the, it was, the price assessors weren't going to make any horrific mistakes. So I, like I said, I think Love Love is overs, but I mean, she might make six. I, mean, you, you, I, can't, I wouldn't laugh at someone for putting up double figures, so I can see, yeah. I can see the case you could make why you think she's up against it on Saturday. That's yeah. Fine. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. Mul- Multarger, who's unsuited in that Emerson as well, gets Jay Doyle on. Uh, she'll probably get back again, but Jay Doyle, great uh, UK jockey. Um, probably worth paying attention to. No worries. And uh, finishing off the card, a couple of benchmark 78s. Yep. Um, race 8 over the 1100 metres. Yep. Um, looks like Trumbull for Kim Moore's. Mm. Being backed in a bit, $2.50 at the moment. Is it 250 or? Yeah, $2.50 this morning. Is there been a, a scratch going on that or because um, it was it was about three fifty last time? Three forty. Um, the eleven and the twelve were the scratch. Yeah, no, that's, that doesn't change. So, yeah, yeah, there's obviously been a big go for just in the last hour or so. It's like, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, look, he's, he's racing really well. Um, he's missing the start. He's missed the start all, uh, well, certainly his last two starts, and he went over nine hundred metres, which didn't really suit him first up. He's going really well. Um, Gee, six to four, two fifty. That's <laughs> that is rock, rock, rock bottom in my opinion. You know, considering he's missing the start, he's drawn nine. There's pace, but not breakneck pace for eleven hundred metres. So, yeah, if he misses the start, where's he go from nine? You know, just hope he gets in somewhere. Not at that price, by the sound. No, no I, I had Tony's reward very close to him in, yep. in second pick. Um, going going really well. We found him at White Farm midweek a few weeks back, and he got the job done. Great ride by Hugh Bowman that day. Um, he'll be riding in Melbourne tomorrow, so he loses his services. Gets cold, is a downgrade on Bowman, but still a competent jockey. Um, and I would say at this stage, the gap in their price is too great. And um, so if Trumbull's going to be running very short and they're going to ease Tony's reward a bit, I'd be learning Tony's reward. A mm. yeah. sure. um, few other chances in the race, but they're the main two. Yeah. I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the price of this horse yet, but number 13, plenty for Chris Wallace, first up at 1100, which looks too short to me, uh, for him. He didn't run um, at a trip below 1300 last prep. Yep. Um, but he's had two really sort of strong hidden trials. It was great after the line under no pressure in his last trial, which I like to see. I wonder if they're preparing him differently this uh, prep. Maybe get more of it. He was 1300 up to a mile last time. I wonder if they're going to try and aiming at shorter races this prep, in which case 1,100 first up wouldn't be a problem and his trial suggests he's in great form. Drawn badly, low strike rate apprentice, but against that got 50 kilos and around 19 bucks in the early market, so hmm. might end up specking him, but uh, he's an interesting runner either way. 
Chances um, number seven Bergen, number nine High Shine, and number thirteen Candano. Yeah. Um, all map well, all look suited at fourteen hundred. Um, all have reasonable jockey engagements. Uh, I just having my first look at the prices this morning. I, I came up Pandano on top and pretty much around what, what price he is. So I'll just yeah. monitor that for now. Um, but to sort of race where I'd be happy to back any of those three if the value was there. So it, it really looks like it's going to be a race I'm going to monitor the market in and, um, and take it from there. There are some other chances in the race. Um, Sausage was in the market last start, but it was pretty plain, but on his previous form would be a chance. Uh, Cuban Royale, I thought we'd figure odds going really well. Louise Day isn't really um, a sort of metro class jockey at this stage of her career, so that should get her price out a bit. Um, mm -hmm. Final award going really, really well, but another horse who's tending to miss the start. So, yeah, for a, for a 78, it's a really good race, and I, I'm not nailing myself, uh, I'm not nailing one down at this point, but it looks like a race I've been into, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. All right, well, um, sounds like a bit of action tomorrow, and um, as we are saying, there's some two-year-old race aside, which is pretty hard to claim, but mm. it looks like there's some reasonable size fields elsewhere, yep. so looks like a, a decent day, and actually the last Metro Saturday meeting for a couple of weeks because yes. we've got the Hunter and then the Dom. Yeah. Million dollar races. Yep. Provincials. Yep. There's more million dollar races than yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to do out there, there at the moment. Um, well, that's a bit of a, I mean, we've had standalone um, Saturday provincials before, Hawkesbury, Scone, that kind of thing. So yep. they're not totally unprecedented, but it's a new thing for this time of year. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Should be interesting. Yep. We'll, uh, all right, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll catch you next week. Have a look at them. No Thanks worries. Right. Thanks a lot.